Okay, this video is about reversal of congestive heart failure, CHF, with a plant-based diet. Um, I'm going to share with you two case reports. They were both done by this doctor here, Robert Ostfeld. He's a cardiologist at Montefiore Hospital. Uh, the first patient is a 79-year-old man, progressive dyspnea, ejection fraction of only 35%. You'd like to see it at least 50%. Uh, so that's a pretty lousy ejection fraction. Severe triple vessel coronary artery disease. You know, these are the epicardial coronaries, the big ones. Left anterior descending, 80%. Left circumflex, 95%. Right coronary, 95% proximal, 80% mid stenosis. So bad CAD, bad coronary artery disease. Okay, so anyways, uh, this guy went on, you know, uh, a vegan diet. They did allow nuts. Other than that, it was low fat, but they did allow nuts. Nuts are very high fat. But anyways, it worked. Okay, within two months, he lost 18 pounds. His total cholesterol dropped from 201 to 137. Um, and before that, he had had a really uh, severe decline in walking endurance. His endurance improved. His triglycerides also improved a bit without lipid medications. Uh, but the big point here is his, his left ventricle ejection fraction increased to 50%. So it went up from 35% to 50%, which is wonderful. Uh, Ostfield says that this is the first time there's ever been a case report of improved symptoms and left ventricle ejection fraction with a plant-based diet. Uh, the patient also helped to, uh, well, some of his thoughts were, you know, this lowered his, uh, the intensity of his diabetes. You can lower the amount of advanced glycation end products in so doing and thus lower the amount of um, reactive oxygen species, you know, tendency towards uh, free radicals and oxidative stress. And this can also help prevent the development of cardiac fibrosis. So this is all some of the proposed mechanisms. Why did it work? Um, you know, I would also add a meat diet. It means you're going to be eating less sat fat, so you get less blood viscosity due to blood sludge and uh, low formation, less animal protein, which also leads to hyperlipidemia. Uh, less uh, total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, the key point there, you're going to have less, less clotting, less blood sludging. That's all good. LDL is a bridging molecule. Carlomicrons of fat are a bridging molecule. You get less TMAO uh, with no animal foods, less xenocyelitis, like that 5-new GC, uh, less iron, so you'll be less prone. But that takes time to get iron levels up with serum ferritin and whatnot and free iron. You're going to be less likely to have leaky gut because now you're eating more dietary fiber and there's less fat in the diet. Uh, so you're going to get less amyloid clotting. That All these things are contributing to lowered blood viscosity. Lowered blood viscosity means lower blood pressure. Lower blood pressure means you give the left ventricle a little bit of a break and you've got a better chance to perfuse it. I'll explain what that means in just a moment. Um, I think this is going to mean better perfusion, better blood flow through the cardiac microcirculation, the small vessels, the ones that penetrate into the muscle. Uh, the less dietary sodium, that's a vasoconstrictor, and more potassium and magnesium, those are vasodilators. Same thing with plant nitrates, they're systemic nitric oxide precursors, it means your arteries will be more open, you won't have the vasoconstriction. That'll also lower your blood pressure which in this case is good. So here, let me explain what I'm talking about with the arteries. So you have the Left ventricle pumps blood into the thoracic aorta. This is the ascending thoracic aorta, aortic arch, descending thoracic aorta. There's a big left main coronary artery that comes off of it. It bifurcates into the left circumflex and the left anterior descending. These little red lines coming off are the intramuscular branches. They go into the cardiac muscle itself. You can call them the small arteries. You can call them the microvasculature. The left main circ and the LED would be the big arteries, the ones on top of the heart. They're called the epicardial coronary arteries. Okay, so the point I'm making is once you avoid all these things, the blood sludge, the amyloid clotting, the low formation, you're going to get better perfusion of these intramuscular branches, which means better blood flow to the cardiac muscle itself. It's going to increase the effectiveness of pumping. That can help to improve the cardiac ejection fraction, okay? Because you've got less hypertension, you don't have to have such a sustained intense contraction, so the cardiac muscle will relax sooner. That also will increase perfusion of it because it perfuses when it's relaxed. You can't perfuse it well when the muscles are all contracted and tight. So that's a double blessing, okay? You'll have a little more time for diastolic flow when you don't have to pump the blood at such a high pressure, pump it so hard. So that's when it fills during diastole, cardiac, left ventricle cardiac relaxation. That's all good. Here was a second case report. And it's also by uh, Dr. Robert Osfeld, the cardiologist from Montefiore Hospital. 
um, in New York. Okay, so this was a 54-year-old lady, pretty young lady, very fat. She had a BMI of about 45, which is like a body weight in the 300s. Um, she had an initial hemoglobin A1C at 8.1. You know, you want that down below like 5.5. So that's still quite high. It's, you know, poorly controlled diabetes there. L lower extremity edema, so a pretty significant advanced uh, symptomatic heart failure. Uh, she had a decreased left ventricle systolic function. Her ejection fraction initially was only 25%. That's a terrible ejection fraction, you know, from her left ventricle. Uh, for five and a half months, she ate a plant-based diet, and she lost 22.7 kilograms. So you want to get that in pounds, you know, 2.2 pounds per kilogram. That's a lot. So she lost over 50 pounds. Um, and the remarkable thing is her ejection fraction increased to 55%, so it came back to normal. That's quite extraordinary. Um, and, you know, she said that she was eating a healthy Western diet. So patients, you know, they don't know anything about nutrition typically. So what she called a healthy diet included soda pop, diet soda pop, uh, chips, cakes, uh, so-called lean cuts of red meat, turkey, eggs, and fish. Okay, chicken, typical ignoramus, doesn't know anything. All right, when she got the plant-based diet, there were no animal foods at all. Lots of greens, veggies, fruits, beans, legumes. Um... He did allow nuts and seeds. He did allow chia and flax. Um, he did allow one cup of tea per day. So anyways, though, it's uh, all plant-based. Um, and she made an incredible improvement, incredible improvement. So there it is, two cases of reverse congestive heart failure. Previously, there were no case reports of it. And there's probably tons more patients that could benefit from this. So anyways, this guy did a great job. I think this is wonderful. It's interesting.